Hello and welcome to this Garrett Common training presentation on how to use the TFTP client on a Garrett Common switch. Okay, so the TFTP client has two modes a TFTP get, which uh, grabs a file from another location, for example my laptop, and pulls it to the switch. If you think of it as, a, as an arm reaching from the switch, reaching out to another location and grabbing the file and bringing it back. The TFTP put is a hand from taking the file on the switch and putting it onto another location, for example a server. That's the way to remember it. Now TFTP get grabs the files, TFTP put sends the files from the switch to the server. When I mean server I'm talking any computer you have which has one of these applications for example there's a variety uh, of different choices you have this particular version is uh, called TFTP D32 which is a freeware version available for download all you need to do is type in TFTP D32 into Google and you can download this one free of charge it's a great little uh, program it's got a server, a client, a DHCP server, syslog server, DNS server all sorts uh, one we will be using here is a TFTP server so what we need to do is uh, get used to the different files we can send from the switch to the server so um, let's start with something simple so if I go show host we can see that we have a bunch of host names to IP address pairings here stored in a host file so what we're going to do is we're going to send that to from the switch to the server so we're going to use a TFTP uh, put uh, type equals uh, here we can see the host file so host with an S and we can send that to the IP address on the uh, the IP address of my laptop in this particular case because my laptop's running the TFTP server application and what we can do now is um, while we're at while we're here we might as well have a look if we see show directory this particular program will store all the files that you want to send from the computer to the switch or that you send from the switch to the computer in this file directory here which is uh, in the program files within the TFTP uh, program file itself and it has a little folder for itself where it keeps all the files so what we're going to do is we're going to be sending and receiving files to and from this particular directory so show directory explore and we can see individual files in here. If we go back to the uh, command line we need to specify the IP address of the server which we have done which is my laptop and we need to give it a file name so we want to do a host uh, file uh, .txt. If you follow with a .txt it means when it gets to the computer you can open it straight away in uh, notepad and uh, that should be all we need and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down slightly so that we can see both windows at the same time so when I go yes you can see this one react and we can see that the host underscore file dot text has been sent the progress is 100% where has it been sent to? it's been sent to the uh, TFTP's directory if we explore that out we can see here host file is now there, it wasn't there before and we can see that notepad has recognized that as a text file and we can open it up and see the uh, the host file on the computer. Okay, that's the host file done. Um, if we want to grab that file, what we can do is we can open it up, and I and I want to add in another entry. So what I'm going to do now is add in another entry called switch uh, 17 with the IP address of 10.10.10.10. Uh, uh, and I'm going to save that file now. So now I'm going to go back the other way so I've sent it from the switch to the server and now I'm going to do a get, I'm going to send it from the server back to the switch so um, before I forget what I always do is I always click on the file and copy the file name exactly so that I don't have to type it in because the names need to be exact so if I go back to the command line and this time I'm going to do a TFTP again do a question mark to get our bearings and let's uh, increase the window size slightly so we're going to go TFTP followed by a get or put in this, case, in this case we want to do a get what type of file do we want to grab? we want to, we want to grab the host file 
where do we want to grab it from? The IP address of the uh, laptop, which is running the TFTP server. What's the file name of the file? We already copied it before. Let's paste that in there now and let's follow it with the .txt. And that should be fine. It might complain about the file extension, so let's see what it says. Invalid file type. It complained that we didn't have an S on the end of the host. So let's just go back here and let's add in that S to um, it's one of the downsides with the command line is you need to be very precise in everything you did. Um, import complete. Now if I go show hosts, uh, show host rather, we can see that the, uh, the entry we added on the computer to that file has now been added to the switch. So if, if we had a list of um, host names to IP address entries on the server that's suddenly taking its time to prepare and we had a new switch in the field and we wanted to uh, just copy and paste that uh, host file to the switch then we could do that using TFTP. So let's have a look at the other options. So we've already seen the two, the get and the put options. Let's have a look at the other files we can transfer. So uh, TFTP question mark and we can see we've got the application, the configuration, the script, the host and the log. Now uh, we'll actually do a specific video on how to upgrade the firmware of the switch but if you wanted to do that here we could do a TFTP get the type it would be app for application and again all the other parameters we had there and that would copy the firmware to the switch. What I want to show you here is the log file so um, if we go type equals log so every event on a switch is recorded in a log file, a lot like a lot, a lot like the captain's log on the ship. You know, captain's log, star date, blah 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 blah. This happened, that happened. Every time you save, every time you make a change, every time you do something on a switch, it will be recorded to the log file. And you can upload, you can upload those files to a central server for archiving, um, uh, for backup purposes. So let's do that now. So for example. IP address equals 192.168.10.100 and the file equals um, let's call it log underscore file and again let's follow that with the txt option so it's a text file uh, error type uh, log log file for puts only ah yes forgive me uh, I'm getting confused uh, we need to uh, specify a put rather than a get so it is easy to get confused from time to time and uh, just uh, be in a hurry and make a mistake but don't worry about it, you're not going to do any harm at all really um, we need to put it because we're taking it from the switch and we're sending it to the server yes we want to do it and straight away we can see up here that's been copied to the server if we have a look in the server's directory we can now see that the log file is there and it's present and we can open it up and we can have a look at the log file it's actually saved it as a, uh, a HTML format so we're seeing it in pure HTML format here so what we can actually do is open this up into uh, into uh, Firefox so if I go right click uh, if I go right click and open with because it's in HTML format I can open it with Firefox or can open it with Internet Explorer let's open it with Internet Explorer and let's have a look at what this looks like Just it's taking this sweet time to load up and yes hmm. HTML uh, okay it's loaded as a text file so bear with me one second yeah, so what I need to do here is change the file extension uh, from I was trying to be too clever here by giving it a, a, a dot uh, txt file extension it opens it as a text file what we need to do is html file extension and yes we want to change it and now we can just double click and it will open it up in uh, Internet Explorer for us It'll take a moment or two to load and here we can see the logged events in a nice uh, nicely presented format no thank you um, no I don't want to do that either so uh, uh, okay 
here we have the uh, the log file in a nice nice format. So all different formats. So that's that's nice and uh, clear. Um, let's just close that down now and close it down. Uh, another important file we can transfer is the uh, configuration file. So if we have a TFTP, let's just put this one to the switch. Uh, type equals uh, script. Uh, there's two versions of the configuration file. There's a, the config file, which is the standard version, and the script file, which is the detailed version. I would suggest always using the script version because it's more detailed. It clearly shows every single aspect of the configuration. There's nothing hidden. It's exactly the commands that you enter into the switch. It's the one to use. So we need to uh, specify the IP address of the uh, uh, server and the file. Let's give that uh, file name of uh, script uh, .txt. Uh, yes, we want to send it, and bang, there we go. We sent it. So um, open it up, and we can open this one again in uh, in in uh, in uh, forgive me in um, Notepad. I had a bit of a mental blockage there for a second, but it came back to me. Here we have script.txt, and here is the script file. So it's useful to um, back up the, the configuration files of your switches to a central location, so that if you need to, um, if a switch goes faulty, you need to replace it out. Um, then you can just copy and paste the original configuration file to the new switch, and just uh, minimize your downtime that way. So it's. Uh, it's considered best practice to back up, back up these configuration files to a server uh, for um, emergency pur purposes, for disaster recovery purposes. And TFTP gives you the option to do that. Uh, and that pretty much covers all of the main uh, TFTP options we have. Uh, the log file, the host file. Uh, we're going to do a video specifically for upgrading the firmware, which will cover the application, but it's very much the same thing. And um, I think that is that. So uh, I'm, I hope this has been interesting for you. I hope it's been helpful. And on behalf of Garrettcom, I'd like to thank you for your time.